I am a friend of NIPAN, friend of many of the candidates here. I am a former delegate, and I am very proud to introduce one of the leaders, chairs of NIPAN, Tracy Strickland. She is invaluable to the movement, and she has an announcement to make on behalf of NICAN, uh, which of course is the largest progressive group in New York. Woo! Representing, starting with the Bernie delegates, and kept growing. Co-chairs of the New York Progressive Action Network. Uh, we are an organization built of over 30 chapters and affiliates from all across the state, from Suffolk County to Buffalo, from the Finger Lakes to the city, everywhere between Staten Island, as well as uh, our affiliates from labor organizations and community organizations all across the state. You know, we were uh, we were born out of the Bernie Sanders movement, and uh, we stayed together. We formed a network to fight for our progressive agenda, as well as progressive candidates who are willing to fight for our progressive agenda. Today, we are here to announce that uh, we have endorsed three candidates, and uh, each will speak in turn. Our organization is very pleased to announce that we have endorsed Cynthia Nixon for governor. <laughs> In addition, we have endorsed, we have endorsed Jamani Williams for Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> and we've also endorsed Patrick Nelson for the 21st Congressional District. <laughs> I know that we weren't prepared to talk about all the candidates, but I'm going to let them do the speaking for themselves. So I'll turn this over to Miki, and we'll hear from all three of our candidates in turn. Thank you. It is my honor to introduce our first candidate, uh, NICAN's first endorsed candidate. You are well aware of her, uh, the press here sure is. Uh, Cynthia Nixon is a longtime activist. She has been a union member for over 40 years. She is a lifelong New Yorker who has chosen to set her roots and her activism in this state. She has been touring the state for the last month, much longer than her life. But as a candidate, talking to community members, learning about the struggles that they're facing in this state with such stark income inequality in 2018. So it's my honor to introduce Cynthia Nixon. I felt like I had 
opportunities that are not available to the vast majority of New York's kids today. New York schools are the second most unequal in the entire country. We've got a $10,000 spending gap per child between our 100 richest school districts and our 100 poorest school districts. New York is now the single most unequal state in the entire country. The top 1% of New Yorkers earn 45 times what the other 99% earn combined. And the thing to understand about this kind of bone-crushing inequality is that it doesn't just happen. It's not inadvertent. It's not a mistake. It's the deliberate result of a choice made to slash taxes on the wealthiest and on corporations and slash services and opportunities on everybody else. It's a choice made to allow the schools attended by our children of color to be segregated, underfunded, and overpoliced. It's a choice we're used to see, see being made by Republicans like Donald Trump, but for the last eight years, it's a choice we have made, seen made over and over and over again by our governor, Andrew Cuomo. The last eight years under Andrew Cuomo have been an exercise in living with disappointment and dysfunction and dishonesty. New York needs a governor that believes in and will fight for bold, important ideas, like fully funding our schools, like getting big money out of, out of campaigns and out of government, like single-payer health care. The reason... <laughs> the reason that I am running for New York governor is I believe in these things and I want them and so many more for New York and for New Yorkers. We are so tired here of the corruption and dysfunction in Albany and we are so tired of fake Democrats who aren't going to lift a finger unless their corporate donors say it's okay. We're doing things differently in our campaign. We aren't accepting a single dime of corporate money. bought because this campaign belongs to the people who are a part of it. This is a campaign about New Yorkers coming together and pledging an end to racial, economic, and gender inequality. Here are a few things we could do right off the bat. We could legalize recreational marijuana. justice issue. We cannot keep putting people of color in jail for something that white people do with impunity. We have to, thank you, we have to end cash bail. We've got 25,000 25, people in our jails right now and 70% of them sitting there have not even been to trial. They're there because they can't afford bail. They're there because they're poor. This isn't how we should be running things in New York State or in the United States of America. Our schools need more counselors and less cops. Yes. Yes. We have to end the school to prison pipeline that's ushering white children into college and children of color into the criminal justice system. Here, here. here in New York, we have to treat our earth like a home. That's right. We have to get ourselves off of fossil fuels and most importantly, we also have to hold fossil fuel billionaires accountable when they poison our communities. Thank you. We have to make the dream of universal health care a reality and with a progressive government, we can do that. I will be fighting for the New York Health Act, and I will see to it that we enact Medicare for All single-payer health care so that every single New Yorker is insured. Yeah. We need to make sure that those New Yorkers who have most recently arrived 
feel as welcome as those of us who have been here for years and decades and more. We have to turn New York into a real sanctuary state. I will pass the New York Dream Act, I will pass the Liberty Act, and I will ensure access to driver's licenses for all immigrants. skyrocketing rents and our affordability crisis. I will stand up to the real estate industry and I will stand with tenants as we, as we expand rental protections and, and rights. We have to, in New York, fix our very broken subway. There are so many things we need to do in New York and that we can do in New York if only we come together and we fight for them. This is not a time to settle. This is not a time to sit on the sidelines. This is not a time to stand down. This is a time to stand up. This is a time to fight. In this year, thousands of progressives all across this country are running for office for the first time because they believe what I believe which is that if you want real change to happen, you have to get involved and you have to make it happen yourself. I am so proud today to receive and accept NIPAN's endorsement. I want to say to you that it's something that I can actually feel. That it makes me feel like I'm a part of something larger, of course, than myself, but larger also than my campaign. It's something that makes me feel and makes me know that I'm part of a movement, because that's what this is. This is a movement. This is a, this is a blue wave, and we have to catch that wave, and we have to build that wave. And I am so excited to work with you in the coming months to build a better New York for all New Yorkers. This is what we can do when we work together. I'm looking forward to knocking on doors and organizing communities and building a New York that's a better place for all of us. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, this is an exciting time in 2018. And as I mentioned before, I spoke a little earlier, uh, there is a, a, a blue wave. Some people want to ride it, um, but we all that way. We created it, it is us. We're only gonna grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And I keep hearing you know, this talk of unity, and I understand it, but it always seems to be that talk of unity is only when the people who are really pushing the issues that people care about are starting to rise up. So if we want to talk unity, then listen to us. Um, we are actually the ones that understand the hurt that people are going through. Unfortunately, um, on the other side, on the other equation, the Republicans listen. They listen to the people, I guess, who want a bigotry, they listen to people who want Islamophobia, they listen to people who want a hatred, they listen to people who want gender, uh, gender inequality. They listen to those people. And they got the worst president we could possibly have, but that's what happened when you listen to the people. We are pushing messages of love, we are pushing messages of equity, we are pushing messages of equality. I believe that those messages are so much better for this country. I believe those messages have always been. <laughs> and if the Democratic Party wants to capitalize on this blue wave, wave, by the way, which we created, the only reason this wave is here is because of people like us in this room. Let's not take that for granted. People like us, and I want to say the Democratic Party time and time again, they have saved this country time and time again. And if you want unity, please listen to us. Because we not only want unity, we want justice. We not only want unity, we want equity. We not only want unity, we want people to pay their fair share. So, you know, sometimes it's like people ask for peace, but don't ask for justice. If you're going to ask for unity, give us something to unify around. We have people suffering and they are looking for true leadership and they have not found it. They have not found it in the gubernatorial mansion. The reason I'm running for lieutenant governor is I believe that office has been misused for way too long. I'm not going to be the lieutenant governor for any particular governor. I'm going to be the people's lieutenant governor. I'm going to be the one We have the funds that we need in this state. There's about $20 billion in fairness fees from the carried interest tax to the loopholes to the taxes that the Republicans took from the people who could afford, uh, could afford to pay more back in, in the tacky days. And this is what they did to make it seem like they were great at mathematics. They stopped funding things on the state and they pushed it on the responsibility of the localities. And they couldn't afford it, so they cut services. We can get those fees back. But here's what the governor did again. He imposed an arbitrary spending, tax, spending cap for no reason at all. So we have that cap. Even if we can get $20 billion in fees, he won't let us do it because he's on his way to the White House and he wants to make it look like he can balance the budget. I'm here to tell you, your kind of politics is not the response needed for Donald Trump. So one of the primary measures that I want to push it's to make sure people understand that cap is false. Remove it, let's get something that makes more sense, and let's get that fairness fees so that hashtag Cuomo's housing crisis can be dealt with. We can put that funding into uh, affordability. To make sure that hashtag Cuomo's MTA, hashtag Cuomo's transportation, all across the state have the funding we need. We have the funding, we also have the blue wave. We're not looking for people who just came out uh, testing the winds to see which way it blows, have a progressive jacket that they keep in the closet whenever it's necessary, it's time to pay the piper. We have seen promises upon promises upon promises over and over, and as I said before, the best predictor of the future is the past. We are tired of the type of leadership that we're seeing. We have risen up. We will make our voices heard. On September 13th, I plan to do that as Democratic nomination of Lieutenant Governor in the state of New York, and in November, I plan to be Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. Thanks to the people.
people wealthy and make them wealthier. We have a leader who parades his plans, which are empty, in details, and never follows through. We have a leader who lies to reporters' faces about his record. We have a leader who refuses to take responsibility for infrastructure, for schools, for income inequality, for assault on women's rights and reproductive rights, refuses to take responsibility for drug laws that widen injustice. We have a leader who pits supposed allies against each other. We have a leader who holds party members, lawmakers, organizations hostage to his demands. We have a leader who threatens anybody who questions him. We have a leader who, who punishes those who challenge him and their families. I am not talking about the madman, the bully in the White House. I am talking about the madman, the bully in the governor's mansion in New York. <laughs> Governor Cuomo, the shit is up. We're on to you, and it's too late. You can't call yourself a progressive and then call for the ends of the working families party yesterday. Yeah. Right. There must be some sort of eclipse because I don't know what happened yesterday. All the bullies went crazy, declared war on the entire planet. <laughs> Zach, you're doing something right. Cuomo declared war against community leaders, activists, people who can't afford to live in their neighborhoods anymore. Cuomo declared war on people who are just trying to survive. Those communities that are going to be defunded, those groups, they represent people. People whose lives are hurting. Governor Cuomo had eight years to change people's lives, and what happened? Income inequality has grown. It's worse in New York State than any other state. We elected in New York State Senate that's Democratic, that's supposedly Democratic again. We elected an assembly, and we elected a Democratic leader. Cuomo is no Democrat, he is a Trumpian neoliberal. <laughs> I'm saying this today because we as my pen need to make a statement. Solidarity is a real thing. Union members are not tools for a presidential campaign. These are people who risk their lives right now, together, in the face of Trump, to create a stronger society. And Governor Cuomo is using them as tools. He thinks we're tools. I'm asking all of us in this room to stand in solidarity with the WFP, with the community groups that have been affected by this defunding. I'm asking that you call on these union leaders to stand with us, the workers, the real people. Enough of these deals, enough of these games. I'm gonna use one example right now because I saw something in the paper yesterday that really drove me nuts. It's rumored that Governor Cuomo wants to move the primary date up. Doesn't that sound Trump yet? Isn't that what dictators do? Authoritarian? He wants to move the primary up so he doesn't have to campaign as much. So he can shorten the campaign time so that we organizers can't organize and activate. That's ruthless. This isn't South America, this is New York State. But I'm gonna give you another example. This is the one that I, I, I wanna discuss with the press so they know what's happening in this state. New York State has the worst voting laws in the country. We know this, right? Voter turnout is Horrifying. But we're overwhelmingly democratic. This ain't the Patak days anymore. This isn't the 90s. This is 2018. People understand that economic equality comes from progressives, from Democrats, not from hope funded Democrats like Donald, like, excuse me, not Donald Trump, <laughs> Andrew Cuomo. So there was this thing that happened in 2016 after the primary, the presidential primary. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders got together at the convention and said, we want to create a commission to strengthen the Democratic Party, which has lost over 1,200 seats nationally in the last nine years. And it was called the Unity Reform Commission. The Unity Reform Commission toured the country. There were 21 members uh, selected by Secretary Clinton, Senator Bernie Sanders, and Tom Perez, the chair of the party. And we examined different areas. I was one of the members of the commission from New York. 
Uh, we examined different areas of the party that needed reform, but we didn't agree on a lot of things. One thing we did agree on, after we received testimony from the executive director of the Board of Elections, who's an elections attorney, we learned that New York State has self-inflicted voter suppression created by the lack of action by the New York State Democratic Party. We were shocked. Wait, so changing the election deadlines isn't a legislative thing? It can actually be changed by the New York State Democratic Party? Oh, that's funny. I always hear Governor Cuomo blaming electoral reform on, on what's happening in the legislature, also integration. The gridlock in the legislature. But no, there's another avenue. The New York State Democratic Party can change its voting deadlines. It can move the deadlines, which if you want to change your party registration, is over a year before the election. They can move it as close to 25 days before the election, and they aren't. They have a lot of excuses. Executive Director Jeff Berman has gone around changing the, the excuses every time he gets caught when it's not true. He's moving the goalpost. He refuses to take responsibility for the party he is supposed to be leading. Mayor Byron Brown, the chair of the party, refuses to take responsibility for leadership in the New York State Democratic Party. They can change the rules now, and they're not doing it, and as a result, three million people cannot vote in this state. So I'm asking you guys right now, we need your support. Call on Jeff Berman, call on Byron Brown, call on Governor Cuomo, call on the Executive Committee of the New York State Democratic Party to move those deadlines up 25 days before the election. It is such a simple thing we can do right now to empower people. And who are the people who can't vote? Of course, they're people in communities that are hurting. They're young people. They're people who have to move around. They're people who don't trust the institutions that we've built, but want to vote for a Democrat this time around because they have no choice. But they can't change their party registration because they would have had to do it in October of last year. We can change this now. On behalf of NICAM, which we're so grateful, has signed on to a letter with 21 other organizations, community organizations, demanding these changes to Jeff Berman. Uh, we ask that we activate our communities and we get these voting reforms passed today. Because this is not an authoritarian state. This is a state controlled by Democrats. Start acting like Democrats. Uh, our next endorsed candidate is Patrick Wilson, who is uh, running for Congress and is a, a NIPEN member. He's a Bernie delegate, and we were on the, uh, the floor of the convention together fighting to be seen, <laughs> fighting for our seats. Patrick, come on up. Thank you. So my name is Patrick Nelson, and I'm running for the United States House of Representatives to represent the great people of District 21 in New York State and the 116th Congress of the United States of America. I'm running for Congress because we have some very important decisions that we have to make in the next coming decades if we are to preserve our way of life and indeed if we are to preserve the legacy of the human race. Uh, we must get off fossil fuels as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, every day that we waste is more damage that is done that we will not be able to reverse. But we also must transition away from a culture of rabid individualism and screw you, I got mine, that says to somebody that it is okay to do something that harms other people so long as you make a profit doing it. We have created an economy that undermines our neighbors, undermines our friends, undermines our family, and undermines our ability to grow an economy that works for everyone has undermined the, fit, the middle class. I've been an organizer and activist in the 21st Congressional District for the last four years. I have knocked on thousands upon thousands of doors from Plattsburgh to Watertown to Potsdam to Canton to Corinth to Stillwater to the town of Wilton and everywhere in between. The common theme for the people of the North Country, whether they be Republican, Democratic, working families, independent, green, or what have you, is that they feel left behind by a political establishment in Washington, D.C., and a financial establishment on Wall Street that stopped caring about them 30 years ago. 
They are sick and tired of government by $2,700 check rather than government for the people. And that is a unifying message that we will take to the streets, to every door across the 21st Congressional District as we work to win back this seat and indeed win back the United States House of Representatives. So with that, I am honored, I am proud, and humbled to accept the endorsement of the New York Progressive Action Network. Thank you, family. I love you. Thank you all. Thank you, Melanie. 